everybody. Good evening. Welcome. Nice to have you all on. Um, Janelle finally got high speed internet. Well done to you. So hello everybody. It is Monday. It's the second Monday and we're going to do these educationals as always every second Monday. Been a busy weekend but I'm glad to ha have you all on. Here we are Monday evening almost 6 p.m. I've started anyway. I'm not going to worry. It is being recorded. Now I've got a blank screen. I've got a blank screen for a couple of reasons. First off, is the sound okay? Let me just check. You can all hear me. And um, we do have sound. Brilliant. Thanks, Janelle. Cool. And you can all see the screen. Hi, Rosa. Good to see you. Just sent you a message if you want to check it. Thanks, everybody. Now, a brief bit for you on mindset. And then we're going to talk about tech, which is why I've got a blank screen. And we can talk about it. So I will be looking for some, uh, what's the word, member participation, as in unmute and speak if you would like to in some moments. To begin with, though, keeping your head in the right place. How does it get messed with in the first place? Well, often it can be as simple as a minor issue uh, a failed order fill from your broker, for instance. Uh, broker messing with your head and using slippage as an excuse. Broker withdrawals can be a huge issue. You try to withdraw and you can't access your funds. Your head is going to be very messed up right there. Any time somebody messes with your pips or pips that are owed to you will generate a level of frustration. Frustration leads to fear and greed and as we say, this is the path to the dark side. It will turn you into a debt collector at best. And, and is that what you got involved in this for in the first place? No, I think not. So move on and find a better broker. There are other ways too, of course. Miss a trade, a big one. Or you just sat down and the move has happened like so 15 minutes ago. You can't bring it back. That's the reality. You have to let it go. Except there will be another move and remember what time it was. I want to say something about the Trading Code 3, the book we've just issued, the Book of Books. It was issued just before the weekend and, as always, a mixed bag from the feedback. I got some great feedback. I saw some great feedback in the group. But individuals, some, you know, well, some won't share it in the group. It is what it is. I'd rather see all feedback in the group so that everybody knows where we all stand. But it is what it is. I'll, I'll read out my thoughts on the idea anyway. Um, where is it? The Book of Books was issued before the weekend and as always a mixed bag of feedback. Some didn't like this bit. Some didn't like that bit. Some didn't like another bit. It is what it is. That's the reality. It is indeed a mixture of opinions. Yours, mine. People just like us in the real world just making their way and telling their side of their story. Now, unlike the likes of BBC, CNN, any other such massive news houses, I will not tell you your opinion. I will not tell you to tell me your opinion about somebody else's chapter. But you can. I don't mind. I listen. You know, in fairness, I do not nor cannot know what it is really your opinion that is, of course, unless, of course, you took the opportunity to share it somewhere like in our book, perhaps. Well, fear not, children, if you missed your chance in the book of books, don't worry at all. I already have an idea for book four in the series of The Trading Code. The Trading Code for A Comedy of Errors. And where I normally would write, um, you know, the title at the top, The Trading Code, in yellow, I've decided to write there bloopers. And I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to copy this. Copy. I'm going to put it here in the chat paste. Does it work? Yes, but it doesn't show as red. Bummer. Okay, so you can all see that in the chat right now. I'm going to go file, new blank document, because this is from my notes, so you don't all need to see this, but I'll go copy there, copy, 
paste control V really and I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger uh, because I think this is really good bloopers written like this. Why like that? Well, that's the B from Bitcoin. That's the L from Lira, though, Lira. Those are both zeros, of course. Why would you not have zeros? How could you not have zeros? You know, when someone's failing, we say, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, zero. And then uh, P for pesos, E for euros, and R, S, the little R, S there, that's for rands. Those are all symbols inserted from word in the insert symbol option and uh, and of course that's inserted as well the little laughter face trading code for a comedy of errors bloopers and why not yes yes i'm going to write the book why not? of course i have to now don't i i mean I, I have to i just have to and already in my own inimitable way i have begun with the title and the, the first page and the first page says yeah it was written by me making use of contributions submitted by members of the group over the years and the next line states if something can go wrong it very probably will and our members are sure to know all about it i mean why not why wouldn't they of course they would now on the tech side, I wanted to talk a little bit about tech because enthusiasm is a great thing and I'm not going to put it, put it down or beat it out of you, but one young man has been putting together a strategy. Again, I'm not going to beat it from you or take it from you or anything. I think we should speak though before we share it with the group because the numbers you are suggesting have been suggested before. Indeed, Matt Hobday was the most recent to look at them in January. I think it was uh, Mr. Peter Dax Burrows who uh, looked at them very, very, very initially. I also think Gert has. Um, looked at them so we have indeed looked at them and i see you are here on the webinar so you know i'm talking about you notwithstanding that it's been spoken about before you know i i did look at some of your set and yes there's nothing wrong with it it's our settings they're our levels they're our numbers um yeah okay so you don't get a no but you do get a some will like it some won't like it and i'll refer you to the answer i gave some moments ago about book three I got brilliant feedback. Somebody loved it, thought it was great. Even one of the Duff chapters written by someone who really was, you know, dabbling, giving it a go, couldn't be asked, putting the time or the effort in or what have you. And that chapter made a difference to somebody. And I thought, good for you for saying that because you never know who you'll motivate by saying it. So well done to you, the lady that said it. You all know what I'm talking about. You all got access to the group. group. So you know it's in there and you know what I'm talking about. I put a big hearty sign on it. Yes, she, she wrote, even Eli's. Yes, of course, the book of Eli. I thought that was a good thing. You know, it's opinion. It's people's opinion. And it should be taken as such in the context that it was written. You know, to somebody out there, I, I couldn't tell you who, but to somebody out there, Boris Johnson is the bee's knees. To somebody out there, what's, I've forgotten the Canadian Prime Minister, but I know someone will write it up there in the moment. To somebody out there, somebody voted for him. So to somebody out there, Trudeau, that's the man. Somebody out there, he's the bee's knees. To somebody out there, Vladimir Putin is the be all and end all and should be running the world. Dor Doris Trump, I was going to say. I really don't mean Doris Trump. I do mean Donald Trump. Somebody out there thinks he should be running the world. You know, I wouldn't allow any of them to arrange a birthday party for my little girl. I really wouldn't. I just wouldn't trust one of them. Not one of them on the planet. If it's titled politician, no. No, thank you. So we must remember that everybody has an opinion about something. How do we challenge opinions? How do we get people to realize that, you know, yes, you've got one, and how do we get rid of it from you? How do we cure you of having an opinion? I try to teach people to be a little more empathetic towards others and their opinions. You're entitled to your own opinions, but not your own facts. I absolutely agree. Yes, Darren, well written there. Yes, 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 absolutely. You're all entitled to an opinion, and um, and you're welcome to keep it too. You're welcome to share it, but you shouldn't force it down other people's throats. 
that's the reality and I'm not suggesting that you are any of you you know but if it's something you don't want to be openly judged let's say for writing it in the group why are you writing it to me you know I managed to cure myself of having an opinion a very 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 long time ago I did it the easy way I got married getting married told me that whatever your opinion was James you should now leave it on the door on the way into the house because her opinion outranks yours alrighty then that's my way that's just my way that works for me not having an opinion when we look at our charts you know we could look at a checklist couldn't we we really could look at a checklist let me just open up a note I had here some moments ago a note a checklist um, something I'm going to share with some others at some stage you know always if, rule number one always know remember and follow the rules of your one strategy well that's rule number one does that um, allude that's the word allude does that allude or suggest that there is uh, an opinion in there no you've got a strategy you know what it is you follow it it doesn't hey you must follow mine this one uh, that one no 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 the other one uh, yeah, not that one the one with the little hundreds and thousands on it you know there will be different opinions there will be different strategies you the individual must pick yours and it must work for you and it must sit well within you I can suggest some bloody brilliant ones that's the reality why and how well because I've been doing it since 2004 and the ones that I've built have evolved it began as this and then it turned into that and then it sort of meandered its way into something else and they all form this sort of crossover with an above and below kind of rule with a, a, a three-step simple process usually the steps remain the same that's it but they can be applied to all well all of the good strategies any anyway I always say as an accountant I have an above the line opinion and I have a below the line opinion and as an accountant what I mean is sort of what was the turnover and the GP what was the net profit in comparison and what are the percentages between the two when I look at a chart I look at what's above the line as in what indicators do we place here I'm going to use a tool I'm going to use a drawing I want to say what indicators do we place on this part of the chart the body that aligns with the actual you know price if you like concurring with the are we in an uptrend is the price higher over here than it was over there we're pretty much in an uptrend as at right now then aren't we as at now is another accounting term I use and then we look at below the line and below the line could be as simple as and I'm not going to put one of our regulars on I'm going to put a stochastic on there a stochastic RSI for instance or a stochastic oscillator it doesn't matter there's the below the line view now and the below the line view says hey you know I could be overbought up here and I might be meandering into a, a sort of a sell signal and if we scroll back and we say hey do you work on balance of probability you came from oversold you went through a line that said hey I could be a buy signal you hit somewhere that said you might be a bit sort of stretching it now it might be time to TTFM and take the freaking money and we could say there's a below the line type approach and that's my way of saying do you concur with the indicators we might have on the price do you agree with price is price going up do you tell me price is going up it's a concurring type analogy if you like that's what we want we don't want something down here saying oh you know what this here would be a great idea to sell it here really I should sell it there that wasn't a good idea then was it we need indicators that agree and then they're not agreeing with you dude they're agreeing with the price you see they agree with the price and that way it is not an opinion that you might hold it is an opinion that's been given to you by the charts and that's well that's who I am anyway as a technical analysis trader I take my opinion from the charts the next thing we can look at would be never to trade without a stop loss and never move it further against you now why am us to do something like that James and I'm saying it in a daft voice because trading without a stop loss is a pretty daft thing to do and if you do it it would be a uh, an opinion of yours to do that without any common sense approach added 
you know, and never move it further against you. You had a reason to put it on the charts, didn't you? You had a reason to place it somewhere on the charts. So you shouldn't really have a reason to move it for, I was giving it room to breathe. <laughs> it's breathing fine. It's breathing just fine. And if it's not breathing just fine, then it's going to die. Let it die. We are not here as members of the Red Cross are we we're not here to try and revive something that's dying let's say here it's not breathing oh i'll just give it some room me stop loss because i didn't take the money well it, it, it's down here i'll just move it a bit further will i because the next bar on the screen like tomorrow is guaranteed to nobody so we trade what we see always and thank you katrina amen james she says always an sl you bet risk management always we are first and foremost risk managers that's who we are so rule two we never trade without one and we don't move it further against us ever ever that just isn't the common sense approach is it that would be the well remember the third part in the common sense approach how will this affect me it's going to cost you an awful lot more money eager that's why we do it with a daft voice and rule three perhaps could be something along the lines of have and follow a daily trading plan which includes checking for news in my new book the one i'm about to start writing which is the um the trading code for a comedy of errors one of the errors i'm going to address was uh, a post we saw in the group some time ago the post that will remain nameless and it was hey my charts seem to be frozen is anyone else experiencing experiencing frozen charts um somebody wrote yeah it's a public holiday in america oh yeah there you go if you checked the news you would not be there looking at a 14 pip uh, spread because the market's closed you would realize hey i could go to pub i could walk the dog i could go for a drive listen to music play with the children any other business you have on the cards to do is doable because your daily trade your daily trading plan states check the news first before you do anything else check the news i always when i sit down and i'll prove it always or i'm not sitting here to trade today it's monday but oh look children the forex factory news is open and i have checked what news there was today oh look at that in canada it's a bank holiday today brilliant i had no intentions of working today anyway so because the canadians are having a bank holiday i am having a bank holiday and why not i went off to the zoo with my little girl i took her to a dancing competition yesterday i took her to the zoo today and we had fun threatened to put it in with the monkeys i think her mum wanted me to put it in with the monkeys as well i didn't put it in with the monkeys the thought crossed my mind now no. James, in regards to news, do you, do you mind if I? Of course, uh, yeah, yeah. For, Always for challenging. Yes, good. Can good, we good. pop? Can we pop the news open again? Uh, there on the screen. But wait, there's a, so, there's a sort of a better one. But go on, yeah, that's the news. Go on. Yeah, so like some of these folders are red, some of them are yellow, some of them are orange. Zach and I were having a conversation about this earlier today, and uh, from my understanding, news is news, and it's all crap. Yep, uh, yep. But is there a real indication between the colors of these folders yeah, that would see, make it change? This is the one scene? thing that I would change the color. You see, when anyone speaks, that's red. Got so it. he's speaking, that's red. Notwithstanding, they think it's yellow. I'll remind everyone, I've been trading since 2004. And in 2014, it said SNB, Swiss National Bank, chairman speaks. That's what it says. I don't remember his name. His name doesn't matter. It was the Swiss National Bank chairman. And he was going to come on and speak in 2014. It was. And he spoke. And what he said was, we're not going to defend 1.2 against the euro anymore. The euro and the Swiss franc can do what it likes. We don't care. And the market took less than a third of a second to decide. In that case, it's worthless. And it took 3,000 pips off the currency pair. And that pair usually goes trickly mctrickle sideways range. I always said to my students, to make any money trading a Swiss franc pair, you need to go in with big money it'll move up five or ten pips okay you, you've got to go big money it'll move down five or ten pips to get anything you've got to go big money that's what i used to say so anyone trading big money on the day that the swiss national bank chairman speaks yellow flag news it was 
my foot it was the news if i move him out of the way for a moment it popped up here snb right there it said swiss national bank chairman whatever his name was at the time will not defend 1.2 against the euro and it caused a crash of crashes a crash of note anyway fortunately i'd seen divergence i saw rejection of a line and i was selling the dax however i had a 60 pip target and that's what it gave me bugger carried on about another 200 pips couldn't get back in but i got more on the buy because it was a knee-jerk reaction so yeah there are things on there that affect me if it's a public holiday somewhere if it's a big country yeah i'm having that it's a monday anyway i don't work monday so that's okay notwithstanding this which is the fortnightly educational i wouldn't normally bother with a monday generally public holidays come on a monday or a friday that suits me i take them all off just in case there's one somewhere i hadn't heard of you know there could be some random little banana republic somewhere we haven't heard of that's on a public holiday who knows so yeah do you find the behaviors on these holidays do you find that the behavior is a little wonkier than normal or not really not really especially if it's china or japan because they don't affect our market hours anyway you know okay so and so what i also heard here is that there are times are you leveraging sometimes the news for your plays or not really i would look at the charts and the charts would tell me what's going to happen ahead of the news and then if i know what's going to happen ahead of the news i know where i'm going from it and if it starts to do what i think it's going to do i'll trade it if it doesn't i won't and that's the reality and i'd like to think and yeah there's enough of us on there's enough on this session there are people who be on here and i've been saying okay because of this and this and this we're looking to go long today regardless what that guy might come out and say and we've gone long and we've been right or we've gone short and we've been right but if it went long and we were looking for a short we've said no i'm leaving my arrow work and you can see it and i ain't going to place a trade and that's because whatever it is he's saying the chart wasn't expecting that you know what I mean? Awesome. Thank you very much for that, James. Cheers, Brian. And Katrina writes there, red folders are risk. Speaks are red folders. You bet. Yes. These can manipulate your trades. Trade with caution or just stay out. I've heard others stay out of the market half an hour to an hour before and after. I usually use, Katrina, I usually use the size of the bars. Uh, you can use like an ATR, you know, um, we have it on our on our MT4 setup now, don't we? The ATR is there on the on the in the top right hand corner of the buttons folder, you know, the, the setup. And uh, basically, if it suddenly jumps to a big number and, you know, we wait until it resumes, I just want normal size bars. So if we move to a bit where, yeah, look, random, normal, normal, all these bars are uniform. And then suddenly, oh, look, it's 2.30. That's when the US market opens. These are not uniform size bar anymore. They are when they compare with each other, but they're not when they compare with what has gone before. So I say, well, let's wait until the size of the bar resumes to normality um, and there we go there is the size of the bar resuming to some level of normality after say 4 p.m 1600 hours there's one big and then we're back to these bars are similar sizes to those but those are big it's doable it's tradable looking at our strategy it's very very doable and very very tradable but you would want what's the word some level of skill you would want some level of knowledge to know where the lines are that are being rejected why they're being rejected and what is the proof of the rejection we need proof when we eliminate all but the uh, the facts we are left with the proof of what's going on that's why i say know where your targets are and why they are sensible targets that would be my rule four thanks katrina uh, just for the for the recording Katrina writes, love that, James. Thank you. Yeah, you're spot on. Thank you. Once the bars return to normal, we can return to normal. You know, that's the reality. It's like when you, you know, I compare everything to driving. So if you're driving along and you're fine and the roads are clear, suddenly it starts snowing and there's lots of slippy, snowy stuff on the ground. Okay, when can you resume normal speed? Well, when the snow has gone. That's it. It's, you know, back to the normal road or you'll slow down and be careful. I like to think that a rule in there should be have a workable, fully tested and proven strategy. And I'd like to challenge anyone and everyone to unmute yourself and say, oh, just a minute, the ones you're sharing here are kind of rubbish. And if you can't, okay, I'll assume 
we're, we're taking on the chin. There are strategies are fully tested and they're proven. I'm getting an agree typed in. Thank you. I appreciate that. But by all means, unmute and say, Ooh, hang on a minute. You're welcome. Um, if you know your plan and your strategy inside out, great. If you don't, you should consider printing them and having them up in front of you on a, you know, maybe a, a, a whiteboard or pinned or magneted or somewhere, piece of paper even, even stick them to an old birthday card so that they stand upright near your, at your workstation so they can be seen. And then all you've got to ask yourself through the day is, am I sticking to my plan? Did I follow the plan? Did I stick to it? If you stick to your plan and you knew what your plan was, you've won for that day. I guarantee you, you've won for that day. Or you trade a different time frame, and yeah, you might end up on the back foot. But on balance, you know, any one day, I can't end up on the back foot. I'd suggest anyone trading higher time frames shouldn't have a month where they're on the back foot. That's the reality of it. And why? Well, because we watch our charts, not our account or trade balance, don't we? And we say, ABC, always be checking the chart. I think this is a sensible, um, what's the word, checklist, a checklist, that's it, a sensible checklist. Um, keep a detailed journal of your trades and your trading day, analyse it after the day. And lastly, rule 10, if in doubt, stay out, that's the reality. Now, those, you know, that's a standard kind of a checklist. We can add more to it. We should add number 11. Uh, we got, we got to say, uh, how do I feel? Has there been an emotional event in my life that I'm still processing? Have I had complaints? Have I had people whinging? Oh, I don't like this chapter. Oh, I don't like that chapter. I don't care. I do. But, you know, I wish you wouldn't because that shows an opinion and it's not ours to make. Somebody else wrote it. Take it on the chin. Suck it up, dude. Have I slept enough? Not really, no. I spent the night in a hotel with Stacy and Cashin and they were killing each other. But that's beside the point. I don't trade on a Monday. Did I get enough coffee? Oh, hell yes, I did. And then some. Am I sick? No, I feel fine. I feel relaxed and focused, regardless of those two killing each other. Uh, but that's just me, you know. You've got to see all that is there to be clearly seen. And if you're not, you might need to walk away. If that part's not right, then everything else, and I mean everything else, looking at the charts, looking at the signals, looking at the time frames, comparing things, drawing fibs, drawing support and resistance, you know, all of those things, you are wasting your time. You are liable to mistakes, potentially one trade from disaster. Emotional stability is the biggest component in your trading. And if somebody or something attempts to take yours away from you, again, maybe it's a broker, the broker who didn't fill your order. Maybe it's a broker, the broker who won't release your funds. Maybe it's, I don't know, a chart. My chart wouldn't load. My this wouldn't that. You know, don't mess with it. And if you do, then realise, OK, today I've got my IT hat on and I'm on tech and I've got to find out what's not working and why it's not working. You know, and then you can say, I am emotionally free, free from any incumbent whatsoever, because I don't care. And you need to be able to say, I don't care. I'll refer you guys to, where is he? He's on, there's a young man that's on. And once upon a long ago, the young man came out, this doesn't, and every time I this, it does that, and, oh, and then it goes wrong for me. And I said, show me your, your trading plan. Have you got one? Yeah, I've got a trading plan. Okay, let's look at that. From 8 till 11, I'm going to place trades. All right, now show me your journal. And there's trades in there that were placed from like 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7.05. So you're not sticking to your plan? Uh, no. Oh, and why would that be now? Well, I thought I'd make an early start. Did you plan to make an early start? No. Okay, so you're not sticking to your plan. You've got to replan, by all means, start at 6.30 or 7 o'clock, but put it in the plan because you backtested 8 till 11. You didn't backtest 6.30 or 7 till 11, did you? No. Okay, then. There's the plan. Go back and work to the plan. And that young man that did that 
rang me sometime and he said i yeah i started trading with this i don't care approach and i'm dancing around the kitchen with a beer in my hand and i'm not going to tell you it's been all sweetness and light for him since he's had ups he's had downs everybody does i'm married to cash i have ups and downs i love the downs you know as i say Ed and stacy were killing each other yesterday and today and i drove i carried the bags and i paid and i did be best to keep the peace i'm not going to say i did a great job at it but you know that's it's not my job to manage them too they got to sort their own relationships out you know um notwithstanding how i get on with my wife and my children i get on great with the charts my son came to visit me yesterday night while i was there in the bar uh, sneaking that was the other reason we got into trouble i bought stacy an aero mint chocolate and a bottle of coca-cola at the bar while i had a no alcohol beer and uh, yes we had fun and then she went back and told her mum i had fun with daddy we got this <laughs> cool, thanks for that appreciate that stacy you little snitch anyway it was fun while it lasted and trading is fun while it lasts if you do it properly but if you're not going to do it properly it ain't going to be fun for very long so you have to have to have to manage your risk we have to when we look here clearly we can see oh look there's lots of red bars they're seller bars we don't need to see an indicator to see an x a b c and m pattern you know what i mean we don't need to see oh there's a potential inverse head and shoulders but we didn't break the neckline did we so where are we going if we didn't break the neckline well we ain't going north because we don't have the completion of the pattern well if we're not going north we're going south that's it there is no difficulty really once you can leave your opinion and anybody else's opinion for that matter at the door you guys might remember one day last week there was a perfectly good buy trade i let it go because my opinion that was no for for reasons i've discussed with you at the time i think we should be going south and we didn't we went north and they were perfectly great signals then however still during that same session we did get a perfectly good sell signal and we went all the way to my target and if i remember rightly 11920 was exactly the target we were looking for on that day it went right there. yeah it was that day because it was thursday and that means it was the us open so at the open we were looking for a short it went up it gave perfect signals i left them alone some of you took them that's brilliant that means you didn't let my opinion damage your profits and when there was chance to sell it i sold it and i didn't let your opinion damage my profits now isn't that how it should be if i'm wrong by all means say so but my opinion on anything shouldn't matter a toss to you and your opinion on anything shouldn't matter a toss to me we should discuss it we should see if we can both learn something from it and i did and i like to think that you did brian says brilliant your comfort level should be your focus absolutely yes brian that is 100 percent, and then some yes 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 absolutely your comfort level how does it feel for you because if i ask you to do something and it don't sit well with you you're never going to be comfortable with it you're never going to be able to do it properly if you ask me to do something uh, you know and it don't sit well with me if it don't look great i'm not going to do it i'm just going to go and big fat do my own thing again anyway providing of course that my thing is profitable and again providing your thing is profitable because if yours isn't or mine isn't we do really need to get our heads together and discuss what's going on here why are we not you know uh, and look at this did we have a rejection of a line yes we did i just want to see if that's a big round number it's close enough to a big round number bear in mind that whilst this says 11 9 10 it is quite possible that some other broker already tested the 11 900 so if it comes between you know within 10 or 15 pips of a big round number it is a rejection of the line once we see and there's a bullish fractal and a breakout and then price action that suggests yes we could go then there's potential for drawing fibs and the like and you know yes it's still a naked chart the reason we're looking at a naked chart is to discuss and to educate all of us me too on opinions and how opinion is 
mm, yeah, okay you, you're welcome to have one but realistically you'd be much better to endorse or and and what's the word enforce in yourself a level of empathy with someone who's telling you something with which you disagree because maybe the something that they're sharing is ruining their life maybe i'm going to sell it here because i'm going to buy it there because well maybe it's just exactly the wrong thing and i mean exactly the wrong thing i say that not lightly i knew an engineer once and uh, he and his car well there was four of us or so on the, on the jetty we were it was way back when i was sailing and these guys built their own self steering gear and then he rigged it all and he used it and he said well it's exactly wrong it should be going over there and it's going over there it's going in exactly the opposite direction a complete 180 degrees on what it should be doing and I said, well, can't you just manage it? No, no, I must remake it so that it's not doing exactly the wrong thing. I thought, it works. That's it, that's fine, it works. So you think it's going exactly the wrong way. I'd just rig the steering. So, okay, I'll put it like that when I want to go that way. It's, it's no biggie, you know? Uh, but all right, it reminds me of an old joke about a man. I can't tell that joke. It's not a clean joke. He developed an apple tasted like different things and you turned it round until it tasted like the one you wanted and someone suggested he should make it taste like something never mind anyway um there is the mindset the opinion type set that i wanted to discuss with you today one of the other things i should add in the rules is wicks are you seeing any or many and where are they top or bottom or both let's go back to the 230 on here and ask wix are we seeing any oh look it's 230 and we've got uh, a wick we've got a wick we got a wick we got a wick we got a wick a wick wix are we seeing wix yes do we see a wick now ah, we see two wicks both of them are at the bottom so we've got uh, some indecision wick at the top and bottom but the wicks here are largely in different places then we come over here they're both at the bottom and then we break out so the wicks alone give you a clue another wick yeah but it's all at the bottom no wick another wick at the bottom a wick at the bottom a wick at the bottom um, a little bit of a wick a wick at the top now there you go right there right now remember the common sense angle we used to interrogate charts what do we know about this bar it's a high test bar what do we know about this bar it's indecision what do we know about the bar and then the second part of the common sense was what do the indicators tell you about the bar that's the simple application of thinking it through apply logic think it through how do we think it through what do the indicators tell us about the bar do they concur or not and then the last part of the common sense approach was how will this affect me well, if you're in a buy and you see an inside bar, I mean a high test bar, an indecision bar and some faffity faffity, well, I don't know, I don't know, we don't know. And then a big breakout, a very big bearish breakout, it might be time latest to say, well, I got in, I'm getting out and all just without using anything resembling your own opinion because this is not a wiki bar is it it's not a high test it's not a low test it's a bearish red bar that's a bearish red bar that's a high test a breakout another bearish red high test red low test red but we break out below him anyway you see so the bars tell you the problem with these bars is they take one whole minute to form an opinion and some sadly some traders can't sit still for one whole minute i sat with my little girl and she couldn't sit still for one whole minute in the car she couldn't sit still in the zoo she was really only happy when she went into one room and a volunteer said here pull one of these sticks out she pulled a stick out and had a question if you look at all these plaques the answer is up on the wall somewhere she darted around the room like i don't know what i thought we were watching an episode of the flash she was zip zip zap zap what's the answer to this one daddy i don't know what's the question bloody hell here you'll find that over there i didn't tell her the answer i made her go and look for it you know yeah run some of that energy off there's a good idea i'll just sit over here okay thank you with my coffee so again it's not my opinion then i let the children the people the traders the everybody form their own and everybody is welcome to share their opinion but you must remember that whatever your opinion is i've still got mine 
you know, and I'll listen to yours. If it doesn't agree with mine, I listen, I listen, I'll nod, and I'm going to stick with what I'm doing. And you, you know, if if I share my opinion with you, you listen, you listen, you listen, you nod, and then you big fat do what it was you were going to do anyway. So long as what it was you were doing is working. And I might add the strategy that was shared with me that I was discussing with you all. And I will be chatting with the young man. He said, what was it? What was it? Where is it? Where's the numbers? You gave me numbers today, didn't you? There you go. From 7 a.m. It gave five signals, all valid, 110 pips all together. And he got 75 of it. And that's brilliant. You know, again, there's nothing bad in there. He's talking levels that we're familiar with. He's talking numbers numbers that we're familiar with. I'm saying it in here so that he knows that, you know, I'm not wanting to pee on your bonfire. We've talked about them. We've looked at them. Some liked, some still use. And they don't mind that it's busy. Some like the simple. So, again, there's that whole opinion type thing popping up it's uh, it's it's pretty we had i'm going to say because i do like the opinion type thing you know i do like it i appreciate that we have one i i like and accept that you should share it and the reason you should share it is because you've got one and it's probably better than any you've ever heard from a, a politician anyway notwithstanding that you uh, you really need how to trade without one and uh, my way of trading without an opinion is to just leave it at the door and remember, yes, I'm stupid. I will look at the charts. I will do exactly what it was they told me to do in the first place. And uh, if I find myself not doing that, then um, then I'm out and all. I'll stop doing anything. I'll walk away. And, uh, and, and that is the right thing to do. It's absolutely any thoughts, questions, comments, and I appreciate the feedback that you've given me here already. It is what it is, you know. We are traders. We will have opinions. It does state that in the first part of the book. So, I was kind of surprised to read the negative feedback, really, because it states very, very clearly, yes, you have an opinion. doesn't mean it's a good thing be like the common sense you know common sense the first part of it is knowledge and we've said already yeah that's not necessarily a good thing is it people can have a degree and still be a bloody idiot but you know that's why we've got a book four coming out though isn't it the comedy of errors the bloopers and why not i mean it would be morally wrong not to wouldn't it really i do hope that everybody listening and everybody watching this from the recording later um, is not offended by the fact that there will be a bloopers book. It might take, I don't know, three months, six months. It'll take what it takes to write. It is what it is. Um, again, it'll just be a selection of what we, we, including me, have done wrong in the past. I am going to include mine where I've said, hey, look, chaps, there's bearish divergence. That means it's going to go up. No, it doesn't. But, you know, I do say I don't always think in English. Um, what was that say? I value your way of teaching and feel so blessed to be in your group. Thank you for that. Appreciate the feedback. I'd love to know how we get access to your books. All shared always in the groups. Um, you, you'll have it through that folder at some stage, I'm sure. Uh, they're there. They've still got to be sort of formatted into something that you can read. But they're there anyway. You know, no worries. Book four, I'm looking forward to writing because it's going to have, you know, where we, um, did I already start that bit? I probably did. Let me just see if I go file. Oh, yeah, you did. I wonder did I do that bit? I did that bit. Yeah, it's going to look like this at the beginning. So I think it's quite funny, really. There, 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 there. Remember, this is just an edit on book three. But look, the trading code bloopers. That's what it's going to have in the top there. This is all based on, this is all book three still. And I'm going to edit it so that I end up with book four. Um, and I've still, I've started on the top. I've got to change this bit. And I have changed that bit, but I've got to change this. But I'm working on it. You know, a start has been made. A keyboard has been tapped. And we'll see. It is what it is. I'm happy with it. My blue pet was joining TS first. Yes, I won't. Uh, what's the word? I'm. Um, I'm not going to say that was a great idea. Hey, but in fairness, I joined them too, didn't I? As a as an educator, and a, and I learnt me lesson. That wasn't the right thing to do. It is what it is, you know.
anyway. I won't worry. Happy days. Go on, we've been on 45 minutes. It'll be a nice short recording for you to get through if we call it time there. Bit of an inverse head and shoulders now, and we're testing the neckline. Shoulder, head, shoulder, inverse head and shoulders, testing the neckline. If you're going to trade a naked chart, you need to be aware of your patterns. You need to be aware of everything, you know. Uh, Jonathan says it was a good idea for me, otherwise, I wouldn't have met James. Thanks for that. Uh, Jonathan and Bob too. I appreciate all your feedback always. If there are no questions I shall call it time right here and get the session uploaded and end the recording. Sound fair to everybody? Are you happy? Thanks everyone then. I'll see you in the morning on the live webinar in the morning. Please trade safe until then won't you? And of course we'll be looking at our favourite setups by then won't we? Thanks everybody. Cheers now. Good night.